she pulled me to the side and she's like um we have a visit today so i'm going to need you to go in the bathroom and fix your hair i was like what do you mean fix my hair she was like um i'm going to need you to have your hair down i can't What's good YouTube? It's your girl Nate Trippy, and I am back again with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you aren't new to my channel, welcome back. It's always good to see y'all come back to your girl. You feel me? Okay, so as you can tell from the title, I am definitely going to be talking about what it's like to work at Michael Kors and what to expect from luxury retail companies. It's a lot. It is a lot to deal with. And I just have so much to tell y'all and I cannot wait to just sit here and tell y'all my experience and how much I actually did not like working at Michael Kors. So before I get into this video, make sure you go and follow me on all my social media accounts. I will have them linked down in the description below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified every single time I upload a video so you don't miss out on any of the crazy stuff that I post on here all right so let's get straight into the tea so I worked at Michael Kors I didn't even work there long it was long enough for me to gather that I did not like working there <laughs> so after I got hired it was a pretty quick process um, I went straight on to the field now I was a cashier I was not a sales associate so I was not on the sales floor but I was pretty much still dealing with customers obviously as being a cashier a lot of people know that sometimes that can be one of the worst jobs because customers blame you for everything but working at michael cars the environment was not what i liked it was honestly kind of terrible <laughs> I am no way, shape, or form bashing Michael Kors. If you want to go and work for Michael Kors, then you go and work for Michael Kors. Me personally working at that that store, I just it wasn't for me personally. But if that's something for you, then all power to. So I didn't get much training. Literally, I got one day, and it wasn't even a full day. It was like me. I met someone who was a cashier. I had to pretty much watch them a couple times and then do it now it's not much to being a cashier but sometimes dif depending on where you're working a lot of places they all work differently i got there my very first day and i had to just go and i was just just to go now it was busy all the time um everyone's scattering around every time and you had people, you know, your district people coming in to see, I evaluate you guys, and it was just, it was a lot every single day. The first thing I want to talk about is dress code. So the dress code is super strict there. You pretty much have to look the part. So if you work at Michael Kors, you got to look like you own Michael Kors, obviously. So there we have to wear Michael Kors every single thing has to be my course for guys i but i don't remember much but for guys they could wear jeans if the jeans weren't michael kors then they had to be uh, jeans that did not have any different brands on them so as far as women we had to wear heels during peak hours so just depending on what mall you work at your peak hours are different so i'm just gonna say our peak hours were from 12 to 4. that's where we got the most traffic so during 12 to 4 we had to go in the break room grab our heels and put heels on if you didn't know how to work walk in heels then you had to get a shoe that had like a little baby heel on it and that was that was mandatory you had to do it you had to look like you work in a luxury retail luxury retail store some people just don't like to wear heels and the fact that you're forcing them to wear heels if they have to work that day during peak hours isn't really fair but that was one of the rules another rule is makeup you had to look very very clean so no crazy eyeshadows pretty much you couldn't even really wear eyeshadow to be honest if you did wear eyeshadows it had to be very cool toned colors um natural colors so very light pinks and um maybe some iridescent white or something but I would just say stick to the natural colors nudes were fine um, now as far as shoes your shoes had to be certain colors so camel that was one of the colors 
um, that's like a brown color. You had to pretty much wear, it had to be the colors that Michael Kors puts in his things. Um, so pretty much black shoes, camel, um, I believe you could wear white shoes. And I want to say that's about it. No navy blues, no silvers, no nothing. Um, so if you're trying to shop at Fashion Nova get some stuff, it better be uh, like certain colors. And they have a color sheet. They literally have a color sheet full of the stuff that you have to oh, pretty much wear if you didn't wear it you can pretty much you didn't have to wear makeup if you didn't wear makeup that was okay um but if you were make wear makeup you had to look at that color sheet and it had to be that color i thought that was ridiculous now as far as nails y'all know i love to get my nails done yeah no i pretty much either had to not wear nails or my nails had to be it had to be i think one eighth of an inch over your your finger if it wasn't that they would you would get in trouble for it or they would be like um you need to go you know next time you work those nails need to be off or they need to be shorter i don't wear short nails i hate short nails i love long nails and i love to have things on my nails like rhinestones and like designs i like to express myself through my nails and through my makeup and through my clothes i felt so trapped there that i could not do any of that stuff sir i don't wear pink all the time i don't wear camel like that i don't even wear brown like that so it was just like i was so like taken back at all the rules and i was just like really for a job that's paying you maybe two dollars above minimum wage and y'all got all these rules it was not cutting it for me as far as nail color you could i could this color that i had on my nails is probably okay but i like to do different things every time i get my nails done so sometimes i wear i might wear yellow nails one one a couple weeks later i might have green i might have purple i couldn't do any of that and if i had a certain nail color they would look at you and be like oh your nails are really cute but sorry you need to take them off or just get a different nail color like it, it was so strict and they were so snobby out there i mean I thought that I was snobby at times, but no, they are the epitome of snobby. And I was just like, maybe this is just not the place for me. That's another thing. So nail color, makeup, and shoes. So as far as clothing, we had to only wear Michael Kors things. All we did was pay the taxes on it. So pretty, <clears throat> so pretty much it's like a uniform and you had to wear it all the time. So every time we had new staff dress then that's when you would get another outfit and it would be a complete outfit now i won't say shoes so it'd just be literally just like a dress or a jumpsuit or whatever but i mean the dress that i got was a 250 dollars dress that i personally would never wear like it was cute for michael kors work it's not something that i personally would wear to go out or do anything i just talked about makeup um shoes clothing and now i'm going to talk about piercings piercings and tattoos they all go one in one pretty much if you got tattoos all over your body don't even work at michael kors period he has a vision of how he wants all of his stores to look in every single country in every single state he has a vision of what he wants his workers to look like because he wants everything to look more clean and polished so as far as face tattoos you're not going to even get hired unless you cover it up with like foundation or something um if you have a tattoo on your wrist you have to put a band-aid over it you can't show it i have two tattoos i have one on my back and then i have the one right here and it actually actually i didn't too much care about the one on my back because i knew it would be covered but the one that's right here it's like pretty much on my chest like right underneath my collarbone so a lot of the clothing had you know v-neck cuts or different type of cuts where my tattoo would show and i was not about to put foundation all over my tattoo just to cover it up so um a little bit of it showed but it was okay it wasn't too much to where they would get mad at so um leg tattoos uh you have to cover it up so if you know you have a full leg tattoo or your whole calf is done then you might want to think of wearing a jumpsuit instead of picking a dress and even though it's hot in the summertime but you have that tattoo you can't wear you can't wear a dress because they're gonna you're gonna get in a lot of trouble for having your tattoo show they're gonna tell you to find something else and sometimes in that moment they might make 
they might even make you buy something and Michael Kors clothing is not cheap whatsoever tattoos you pretty much just have to cover them up piercings facial piercings like my septum I can flip inside so that was okay so my nose ring I had to um, put my stud in and I have a really small stud but at the time I couldn't wear my hoop so um, I would forget to put my stud in so I would just take my hoop out I have my tongue pierced that was to them that was like the end all be all for them they're like you have your tongue pierced yeah you're gonna have to take that out every day you come to work I was not taking my tongue ring out every day when I came to work for one that was way too much work and I was like for a job that's not paying me that much y'all sure do have a lot of rules and that was one thing I was not doing I never took my tongue ring out and I'm like people shouldn't be in my mouth anyways I had this one manager who got on my nerves every single day that I was there um, I'm not gonna say her name um, let's just call her Miranda I'm a, that's a, a random name but anyways let's, let's call her Miranda so Miranda you know she would check me in tell me how we're doing for the day what the sales goal is blah 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 and then she like I would notice I'd be like okay and then she'd be like um Dejiani and I'd be like yeah she was like she would just point to her tongue she'd be like this you like I'm like oh what <laughs> like what she's like you're gonna have to go to the bathroom and take that out I was just like okay <laughs> I didn't take it out I went to the bathroom but I didn't take it out so came back did my job that um piercing is a big thing just if you have them and you know you're stubborn like me and you don't want to take them out either get clear ones so they're not as noticeable or just don't apply <laughs> that's all I can say for that hair there is a rule about your hair you can't have crazy hair colors now my hair is dyed and I kind of was like afraid at the time I was like well they're not gonna hire me because my hair at the time I had just got it dyed and my hair was like more on the red side so and it's not a natural red but um so I was kind of afraid I'm like oh they're not gonna hire me because my hair is not the natural color so if you like to dye your hair crazy colors can't do it don't even apply they have so many rules everyone has to pretty much be natural and pretty much every girl who worked there they either had brunette hair blonde hair or black hair they all looked the same and I was just like it's pretty much like you don't get any type of space to really express yourself as an individual everyone there looked the exact same you can't wear your hair in a bun so i thought that was stupid but you can't wear your hair in a bun like i said it's a luxury retail store so it has to look appealing to the eye you pretty much need to look like the model pretty much need to look like that as far as your appearance your hair had to always be down um half up half downs you could not do pretty much your hair just had to be down it could be wavy it could be curly it could be straight whatever but it had to look more clean and polished and if your manager felt like it wasn't clean polished then they would tell you to go to the bathroom and fix your hair so talking about hair let's get into a story that I remember while working there so all the managers there were super super standoffish they thought they were better than you they're like oh, I'm a manager at Michael Kors like girl you're a manager in retail like let's be real these managers will look so they will look down on you and it just they really thought that they was like working for Michael Kors like himself they would literally act like Michael was about to walk in the door at any moment and they had to just be on their shit and I'm like okay yeah that's a good mindset to have but please Michael is not going to visit an outlet let's be real he's going to visit his lifestyle stores which is a complete you have to know a lot which i'm going to get in next but those stores are pretty much the in season stores outlets get a lot of things that are out of season um that are like two three seasons old we had a district manager coming in one day and when i tell you all of the managers were like freaking out to go in the bathroom they would have a box and they had curling irons they had flat irons i was like are y'all serious right now this is what like y'all doing all of this when we had a visit everyone had to be in heels all the guys had to look clean sharp like literally you had to look the part 
and they were I was like it's not worth it I was like it's not worth it um so yeah one manager literally told me I had my hair it kind of in a way it kind of offended me but I have really really thick and tough skin that it didn't bother me as much but I had my hair in a puff and now this my hair is super super dry it's not even defined it's like really really bad but I had my hair in a puff and it was really really curly super cute had baby hair as a lay like everything I was looking good you know I looked fine I looked fine none of the managers had a problem with me because I knew my hair was natural but this one manager she was like we have a visit she touched me after I finished a customer she's like can I talk to you and then she pulled me to the side and she's like um we have a visit today so I'm going to need you to go in the bathroom and fix your hair I was like what do you mean fix my hair she was like um I'm going to need you to have your hair down I can't have it up you can't have it up today I was like are you serious I was like I can't wear my hair up today she was like, no, it needs to be down. It, it just doesn't look. <laughs> what did she say? She tried to play it off as if I didn't know. She was trying to tell me that it didn't look clean because my hair is natural. So I, I just was like, whatever. And I went in the bathroom and I fixed my hair. I pretty much did a quick, I mean, my hair was still curly and it wasn't stuck. So all I did was just take it down, wet it a little bit and it looked like I'd had a washing gun. I was just like, after that, that was kind of like where I was done with it. The people you work with are insane. Crazy. So I was a cashier, so we didn't have much competition, but it's a lot of competition on the sales floor. And you saw it. You saw it every day. So they don't work on commission. They all work hourly. But the way it works at Michael Kors is... As far as sales associates, if you're not making your certain goal, they each give you a goal. And if you're not making that certain goal every day, you're going to get less hours. So, yeah, you're not working on commission, but they're pretty much all fighting for hours because everyone has bills to pay. Everyone has something, you know, everyone's going to need money. So the fact that they're pretty much pinning you guys against each other was like, if you, you need to sell this much or you need to do better than this person or you're not going to get any hours and it that was they that was a real thing they literally did that to you now as far as cashiers for us to get hours we had to have a certain amount of emails a day and um, pretty much signing people up that's what we pretty much had to do but the sales floor was gruesome they did not care you saw people stealing customers from other people we had this one girl there who let's call her Stacy so we had so Stacy was the one that everyone on the sales floor had to look out for because Stacy liked to steal customers from people so Stacy would see you working on a customer getting them this bag getting them that bag and you saw that they had like three four five bags in their hand and then you leave them alone for a second because they're like okay I'm gonna keep looking around she comes and swoops them up offers them something so small and then it's like okay well they're like well I'm ready to you know I'm ready to pay they would she would walk them to the line and then come up to say that that person was next and I was the next one to take them she'll come up and be like hey that person right there I helped them out because we had to also get names of the people who helped them and she'd be like oh I helped that person and if we put it under their name our managers will go in to see how much you know you sold that day and this person just bought five six bags and it's under your name like so you pretty much met your quota for the day and you're gonna get more hours and you're the top seller at our store like that was it was insane and then you had other people from the sales floor and was like do not put her name down I was the one who helped that person all the way all she did was ask them if they were okay and that was it like and at that point if we as cashiers we had our own thing too we was like well if y'all are tripping about one person who got six seven bags because y'all do need to meet y'all quote now none of y'all are getting it because y'all fighting over it so we had that say so that we the cashiers kind of had power in that way where we had to say so of who got it and who did it now if two people helped them and the customer was like well both of them helped me well I was like well you get to choose or it just doesn't go in under anyone's name and it goes under house which means that none of them got it and that it just went to anyone and it pretty much showed that no one helped that person pretty much 
So it was, it was, it was catty, girl. It was a real catty. They was not playing no games on that sales floor. That was pretty much an everyday thing at Michael. And you had to act like you loved your job when you weren't getting paid anything. So that's pretty much the tea on working at Michael. Now after I just spoke about everything that happened, now you can think of if you actually really want to work there or not. Pretty much what you can expect from a lot of retail companies. So that was my story. That was my experience with Michael Kors. I obviously do not work there anymore. It's just not the place for me. Yes, I might go in there and buy a bag or two or buy a wallet, but I like... The brand just not actually working for Michael. Thank you all for sticking around and watching this video. Comment down below if you've worked at any luxury retail stores before and tell me your experience because I would love to know if all of these luxury retail stores are the same. Also give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Again, I will have all my social media linked down in the description box below. I will see y'all in my next video. All right. Peace.